Welcome to The Diane McClay Show, empowering life through choice. Get ready to discover new perspectives, motivation, and balance through Diane's compassionate storytelling and insightful discussions. Whether you're feeling stuck and discouraged or curious and looking for more possibilities, Diane has your back and she's ready to take you on a journey of self-discovery and expansion. Choice is powerful and so are you. The Diane McClay Show starts now. Welcome in, everybody. Happy Friday. Thank you for joining us on Transformation Talk Radio and the Cornelia Stephanie Media Network. I'm your host, Diane McClay. And as always, we are here to help you navigate your life through choice and to empower it with choice. I'm so excited to have one of my friends, uh, one of my mentors, somebody that every time we have a conversation, I'm inspired to be a better person. Uh, we have with us today PJ, who's an international speaker and resiliency expert. He's recognized in 35 countries and is considered one of the most requested in-demand inspirational speakers in the world. And I'm telling you now, you've got to get this guy on your stage. Absolutely. I endorse him 100% to lift you up, raise you up, make you laugh, and make you think. Uh, he's been speaking since he's been seven. He's been interviewed hundreds of times throughout his life. And he is focused on um, promoting resiliency and uses his intimate understanding of breaking through physical and mental barriers to guide conversations and lead people out of their own personal limitations and into real freedom and possibility. So with that, one of my friends, welcome in PJ. I'm so happy that you're joining me today. What up? What's hello, up? Hello, people, people. Super glad to be here also. Thank you for the invitation. It's um, always fun to be able to have a conversation with you. And then for people to like be that fly on the wall and listen in to the conversation is always so delicious. So I'm really excited to be here. And resiliency is such an important aspect of our lives that I'm very excited that we get a chance to talk about this and hopefully give people some skills today that will allow them to get where they want to go or get through what they may be going through currently. Right. And and I love the fact that you say get where they want to go and get through it because, you know, um, whatever people are going through, whether it's a difficult relationship, whether it's a difficult thing at work, lack of a promotion, maybe there's a failure that has happened in their lives. Um, we all get faced with our demons. We get faced with the negativity. We get faced with the stories. So I'm looking forward to hearing how you help people navigate some of that. Uh, let's give our audience a little bit, uh, just a slight uh, history about who you are and, and why resilience is actually like a part of your everyday living. Like, let's bring us up to speed if people haven't heard our shows before. Okay, um, I'm a little dude in a wheelchair. So let's start there. I'm a little, a little dude in a wheelchair. I've had uh, muscular dystrophy my entire life. I walked until I think third grade. Uh, no, I walked until third grade with leg braces. Third, fourth, and fifth grade, I walked without leg braces. I threw them away. Um, in sixth and seventh grade, um, I walked with braces again. In eighth grade, I just was too weak. So I went into an electric wheelchair. My whole life has been around resiliency, about saying, I want that, and how am I going to figure out how to get that? So under the umbrella of resiliency is this idea of being creative, being resourceful, being energetic, um, being willing to ask for help, um, being willing to let go of our ego, or my ego in this case, so that I can achieve and accomplish and experience the things in life that I want to experience. So despite my physical disability, I've lived a much better life than most able-bodied people, jumping out of planes, indoor skydiving, aqua jetpacking, um, water skiing, although I'm not a very good water skier. Apparently you're supposed to ski on top of the water. I ski <laughs> under the water, so not so good at that. But I've lived a miraculous life and part of it is almost entirely because I have an innate um, and learned um, resiliency. And what does that mean? An innate, it's just something I'm, I'm born with, right? Like I see something I want and I don't quit. I keep going, I keep trying, I keep finding a way. And so um, it may not always be easy, but there's always a way. And so I always find that way. And so there's an innate resiliency, but there's also a learned resiliency from the way my mom raised me. She raised my sister and I not to be able to say, I can't. She would say, can't doesn't live here. Can't never did a thing. <clears throat> You know, so we'd say, I can't, my mom would say, you know, did you try? Keep trying, don't quit. You know, so that learning um, of trying and never quitting um, really lent itself to my innate resiliency. And so throughout the course of my entire life, I've really learned a lot about this. And I find that it's really often the number one problem within relationships, the number one problem at your career and your career. It's the number one problem with where you are um, emotionally, 
um, all of that, everything comes back to, are you resilient enough to push through the difficulty or are you, and or are you resilient enough to get to that goal? Or does something else pop up in your mind? Like, hmm, I don't know, I, I, don't, I don't feel the commitment. I guess I'm just gonna flip through Instagram or Google, uh, whatever, TikTok. Um, and the problem with that is that resilience is born from commitment. So what are you committed to in that moment? When you find that life gets difficult, right? Instead, I always say, um, reduce the strain, stay in the game, right? Reduce the stress and you'll be able to, you'll be able to keep moving forward. So, so many people think about resilience as pushing through when life gets difficult and resilience is a finite energy inside of us, inside of our mind, inside of our body. So I like to say that um, life is not always about um, finding the courage or the endurance to push through the difficult times, but instead to let go and release the things making life difficult. So you can pursue what you really want and you can become and stay who you are and who you want to be longer because you've released the resistance causing the suffering, causing the struggle. So again, release, you know, release the strain, stay in the game. So I don't know if my computer screen is big enough, but I'm starting to write sticky notes. I've got about <laughs> six of them already of PJ's wisdoms. Really? Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, it's just guiding us where we're going to go. When I first heard you say that resilience is kind of about pushing through, I'm glad you actually corrected yourself in this last sentence, because um, I want to, I want to clarify for our listening audience and our viewing audience, the difference between persevering yeah. or perseverance, the now. Yes versus resilience and my understanding is perseverance is really that hard definition of pushing on continuing uh the opposite of it is not surrendering right so you have perseverance which is go go through it regardless no matter what get it done keep trying don't give up and on the opposite end is surrendering right giving in calling it a day quitting saying i can't whatever but energetically i feel like resilience is actually in between the perseverance and the and kind of the the surrendering. So speak to that a little bit about what is your definition of perseverance and then how is that different than resilience? Because I think we got to start there in order to build up the resilience and to have that conversation. Yeah. So I think that I would modify it slightly. Um, I would say that let's look at let's compare perseverance versus persistence. Okay. Perseverance is the ability and, and look, if you look in the dictionary, Perseverance and persistence say almost the exact same thing. It's almost the exact same definition. So I like to make a qualification. Perseverance is I'm persevering. I'm dealing with the suffering, the struggle, the difficulty. I continue to push through. And even though I'm walking through mud up to my waist, I'm just not quitting. I'm just keeping going. I'm, persi I'm pers uh, persevering through the suffering, right? I'm starting, you can notice that I started to slip into persistence. So let me back up because I did start slipping to persistence. Perseverance is even though there's that weight on top of you, even though there's that pressure in front of you, even though there's something trying to hold you back or hold you down, perseverance is not being, not being pulled back, not being pulled down, not being stopped from, being moving, from moving forward and not being held down even though you feel the weight on you. So I'm persevering from all the resistance. I'm, I'm still moving. I'm dealing with it. I'm carrying the weight. I'm dragging whatever it is behind me. Whatever's trying to pull me under, I'm lifting it up every time I take a step. This is perseverance, right? Being able to deal with the suffering and the struggle. Persistence is a very close comparison and very close cousin. Persistence is I see what I want and it's out there. And no matter what's in my way, I'm going after it. I'm still seeing it. I'm keeping my eye on the goal, keeping my eye on the target. This is who I want to be. This is what I want to achieve. This is where I want to go. That's where I'm going. I'm not even looking at the camera right now. I'm looking past the camera into the future, further beyond the camera right now so that I can see, like, I can feel my body changing, my mind changing. You might even have seen me lean forward a little bit as I did that, like, as if I'm seeing what I want and I'm pushing through no matter what it is. The persistence is the ability to push through. Persistence is the ability to push through. Perseverance is the ability to endure, right? And then resilience is a sliding scale. 
The resilience is on a sliding scale based on your commitment. What are you committed to in that moment? Because in that moment, if all of a sudden I commit to taking a break or resting or relaxing in that moment, that's where I am. And there's nothing wrong with, with um, stopping. I know you have a question real quick. Let me just say this last thing. Um, <clears throat> I filter everything that I do through the, the, uh, the concept of, am I being resilient right now? Excuse me. <clears throat> when I do that, I simply ask myself, am I being resilient? This morning, my personal care assistant canceled on me. I didn't find out until the very, very last minute. And so I spent four hours, no lie, four hours trying to find someone to come and help me go to the bathroom, get dressed, get up in my wheelchair. And so at one point I was sitting in a weird way and my legs started to hurt. So I leaned back and I asked myself, am I being resilient right now? And I said, no. Then the second question is, but am I, take, am I taking a break? Am I being safe? Am I taking care of myself? Right? And the answer was yes, because what I was experiencing was causing some distress. So let me take a break from that so that, because resilience is finite, so that I can bolster myself up again, I can change my angle, my position, whatever I need to do, so I can lean into it and I can continue forward. So there's nothing wrong with taking a break, but in that moment, my commitment was take a break, give yourself uh, a little bit of relaxation, move forward. The problem comes when, when distraction occurs and people become committed to the distraction, their resilience level goes immediately down for what they want. Uh, you, man, <laughs> there's, a, there, there's a lot to unpack there. Um, I was going to, I was going to augment your story uh, yeah, or your, your definition of perseverance and persistence. One of my favorite movies of all time is Rudy. Rudy uh, Rudiger. I'm actually going to, I may meet Rudy next week or next month. Oh, uh, yeah. Like yeah. the real, like uh, Sean, uh, yeah. Sean Aston. That's uh, awesome. No, 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 no. The real Rudy. Oh, the real Rudy. Yeah. I might wow. How, Rudy. how exciting and powerful is that? And so maybe you can test your theory about persevering and persistence when you have that conversation, but you know, it, for those of you who don't know the movie, it's real quick. It's a real short guy who lives in Notre Dame. He's not college educated, he comes from a steel mill family, and he decides that he wants to go to Notre Dame. He's not a good student, uh, not a great athlete, but that's his dream. So he tells everybody he's going to go, and everybody says, you're, you're, not, you're not meant for college, you're not meant for football. So his perseverance, I would say, is his. he was committed to the dream of going to Notre Dame and playing football for the Fighting Irish. His persistence was when, and jump in if you want, his persistence was when he was actually on the practice squad and he was literally a tackling dummy for all the big guys. He gets hit on the ground. The big guy says, stay down. Like you're going to get yourself hurt. And he pops back up and he's like, bring it on. And, and it gets popped again and he goes down again and he's bleeding and he's got the dirtiest, nastiest jersey on the field. But he kept he was persisting. He kept getting up from literally getting knocked down. And he literally pulled the helmet of one guy towards him. And he said, if I give up, I can't help you prep for whatever team you're playing. Right. If I don't do my job, you can't do your job. Yes. And then, you know, the very next scene, he gets plowed again into the dirt. And he kept doing that. And then resilience for Rudy is that not only did he get up every single time, but he went to school, he got his grades, he kept checking the, the playlist. And I'm not gonna give it away because it's a great movie, like you should go back and see it. But I think there's a really, really good parallel for these three different, but similar words that often can get confusing in, um, in our vernacular. And, and I, as a side note, I think choosing choices of words that's over my left shoulder. And it, if we are deliberate about the words we use and we start having an understanding of their impact and their definition, I think that actually is one tool to start uh, building and practicing resilience. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I would modify it slightly again, um, because I, and it doesn't matter, like, it, like as long as you have your own definition and it makes sense in your mind, that's what matters. I would say he was persistent to get on the team and to go to Notre Dame he saw a goal and he went after it and he said that's what i'm gonna do right and then when he was getting beat up um on the on the field over and over and over he was persevering the suffering and the pain right and overall both of those he was resilient to get his goal and to continue to move through that 
right? So my definition of resilience really is maintaining the um, energy and focus to, I got to find this, another word for maintain a second time, to maintain your energy and focus so you can maintain a state of mind and or achieve a particular goal, right? So what I'm talking about here is he was, he demonstrated his resilience every single time he got up, right? And the simple fact that he got into Notre Dame demonstrated his persistence. The fact that he got on the team demonstrated his persistence. The fact that he de dealt with all the suffering and the struggling and the, and the people putting him down in the worst jersey and the mud and the muck and the mire and falling on his face and being in pain. He persevered the suffering of that because of what he wanted to maintain the state of mind and his position on the team. And you really see the motivation. I get chills on my spine. You really see the motivation when he grabs the, the helmet of the other person and he says, you cannot do your job if I don't do my job, right? And what that does is it immediately looks at the other person man to man, eye to eye, face to face, chest to chest, spirit to spirit, mindset to mindset, heart to heart, and says, I'm willing to go to the distance. Are you? It's a challenge to the other people on the team. And when you raise your standards so high, you, I literally am tingling through my whole body. When you raise your standards so high, it requires everybody else around you to do the same thing because that level of commitment is in, incredibly contagious. It's infectious. Everybody feels it. Everybody gets it. Everybody moves forward. To add to his story, I think he took nine years before he found somebody um, who would make his story. He didn't like, he wasn't like, oh, hopefully somebody will hear my story and make a, and make a movie out of it. He challenged people and reached out to people and talked to people and met everybody that he possibly could to actually be able to get his movie made. And finally, one day, if I remember correctly, <clears throat> he was having uh, lunch in Santa Monica, told somebody his story and said he really wanted to make a movie about it or find somebody to make a movie. And somebody said, oh, my friend might be interested in that. And his friend happened to be, I think, a producer and gave him the number right there. Rudy picked up the phone called him, the guy, uh, or went over to his house and knocked on the door, and the guy denied him, but Rudy kept pushing, pushing, pushing. Finally, the guy let him in, and um, the rest is history. So his but persistence and perseverance didn't stop um, on, the, on the battlefields of football. It kept going long after that, so all of us could be inspired by his, his resilience. And I wanna I wanna bring it back to I love your quote that says resilience is born to commitment. No, born and it's born of or from born commitment. born of or from commitment. Thank you for that. So mm -hmm. resilience is born of or from commitment. So the first question to remind our audiences to ask asks to ask themselves is what are you committed to? Yeah. You know, um, I'll give an example. I, I just went home and spent 10 days with my family and I've been having kind of a um, an interesting relationship with my sister where there were some misunderstandings and there was some lack of communication and then there were some feelings on both sides. And if I if I had this piece of advice now back before I left, you know, what am I committed to? What I can honestly say is I'm committed to positivity. I'm committed to seeing each of us feel good about each other. I'm committed to being supportive and understanding and, and compassionate and, and I'm committed to peace, right? So if I, unfortunately, it was a really great visit home because you and I had actually done some coaching together before I left and thank you for that. Um, but I think that's a really strong question to ask. Like if people are driving in their cars today and they're listening to us right now, if you just say, what am I committed to? Okay, I'm committed to my family. I'm committed to my job. I'm committed to getting home safe. But dig a little deeper. What's beneath those things? And then, and then I think the next question is, um, what are you willing to let go of? Because I heard you say that too, that really we've used the rubber band. A lot of people have heard this analogy that resilience is epitomized by you hold a rubber band on two ends and you let go of one end and it snaps back. And that rubber band is by nature resilient, but you and I have talked about that it doesn't really ever go back to its original point. The molecules are different. Eventually the rubber band dries out, but it's, we talked about what happens in between either end of the fixed point where you're holding on. So when you let go of one or both sides of the rubber band, 
action happens, energy changes uh, the shape, there's motion, there, there is a dispersal and also a gaining of energy at some point. And so to our listeners, what are you committed to and what are you willing to let go of? And then let's kind of bring in what resilience is. Like, why, why do we have to have resilience in our life? And why, what happens if we don't learn how to use it properly? Yeah, I think it's really important when you talk about commitment, right? Because commitment is really where resilience is born from. And so when we say, what are you committed to? Um, we just have to look at your life to see what you do um, every day and how you interact with people every day to identify the current commitment. Uh, it doesn't mean that you can't transform that commitment. I say change is inevitable. Transformation is a choice. So you're going to change throughout your life. You're going to become less committed. You're going to become more committed. You're going to become less resilient. You're going to become more resilient in different areas. And things are going to change based on the influence of your environment um, or the people that you're talking to, the knowledge that you bring in. Um, but transformation is a choice. That's when you stop and go, okay, what am I committed to? What is it that's really important to me? And if, for example, um, you're having a relationship with your boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, spouse, boss, colleague, employee, uh, child, friend, whatever, and you get to that point where you say, forget it, I'm, I'm, I'm done talking to you, you know, this is irritating, I'm not, I'm not interested in doing this. In that moment, your resilience is thin because what you're really committed to is getting away from the, um, uh, what's that called when people- Conflict. Fight conflict, thank you. Yeah, it's you're, you're committed to getting away from conflict, right? So listen, this is where um, resilience, the umbrella of resilience starts to look at creativity and resourcefulness. Okay, if I'm committed to avoiding conflict and I know that I'm in a bit of a difficulty with my spouse or partner or friend or whatever in this moment, like how can I then have a conversation with them? Or what way can I approach this situation? How can I listen? How can I hear? How can I make my statements in a way that minimizes the feeling of conflict and maximizes the ability to understand? So um, when I say that uh, life is not just about having the courage or the endurance to push through the difficult things, but instead to let go and release the things making life difficult. What I'm talking about is immediately saying, okay, if I want to be resilient, I have several options. A, I can see my goal and I can push until you get it. That's sort of the argumentative type. Like I'm going to push and push and push until you see my side and um, give in and agree to what I'm saying. The perseverance part is like, I'm just going to let you assault me and beat me up. And I'm going to keep trying to explain this differently. And, you know, maybe I'm, maybe I'm yelling too, right? But I'm still just like, I'm not going to back down. I'm not going to give up. This is my position. And this is the only way that I'm going to, I'm going to um, uh, believe. And if you don't believe like this also, then we're just going to continue to conflict or conflict or fight, you know, pound our, pound our, uh, ideas and heads against each other. Or there's this idea of going, hey, okay, I really, I'm very much committed to having a peaceful, healthy, easy, happier, more comfortable dynamic with this particular person. How do I do it? What are my resources? How do I get creative? What are my options? And then it's beginning to explore how am I showing up? Because I always talk about art, awareness, responsibility, and technique. So let me be aware of how I'm showing up. Let me be aware of how they're showing up. Let me be aware of my perspective. Let me make every effort possible to be aware of how they're showing up. Then let me, instead of be in reaction mode, A-R-T, instead of being in reaction, because reaction is a slave action, let me get into responsibility. Let me look at myself and realize that I actually have the personal power, the personal ability to respond in the way that I want to respond that's going to create a better outcome. So I take the responsibility to then act in what way? T, technique. How am I going to interact with this person? How You can even hear the sound of my voice is getting softer. Am I going to soften my voice? Am I going to slow down? Am I going to listen more? Am I going to ask more questions? Am I going to start out by saying, hey, listen, I thought about your perspective. And you know, it makes a lot of sense to me. I really understand this and this and this. I just have a couple of questions to help me understand better. So all of a sudden, I'm starting on their side of the table 
we're not in conflict. I'm trying, I'm making an effort to understand them. So for me, this whole process is about collaboration, not compromise, collaboration. Because with compromise, often people feel this sense of loss and resilience, you know, sometimes people feel like they have to compromise, you know, um, and yeah, maybe you do have to compromise, but I, I like to believe that I don't believe in sacrifice. I believe in a willing exchange of something that I might want for something that I want more. So if I have to let go of something that I want, it's in a willing exchange. It's not a sacrifice, right? It's like, okay, well, I want this more. So I'm going to put my commitment, my effort, my intention, my enthusiasm, my excitement, my gratitude into this other thing and be really grateful that I got it. Um, collaboration, on the other hand, is where you go, okay, how do I collaborate with myself and everybody else involved to say, this is what I want. This is where I'm going. How can I be resourceful? What are my resources? What are my creativity? What's my energy level like? Um, what's my focus? What do I need to bring together all the pieces and parts to get where I want to go or to get through what I'm currently going through? I don't know if that answered your question. I just get so excited about the topic. I want to no, it, it is, this, is, this is why I wanted to have you on the show is because I think um, it's an overlooked topic, resilience. I think we talk about persevering, you know, pounding through, getting to the end. And there's a lot of conflict in that, you know, where there's a lot of aggressive energy and there's good sides and, and there's pros and cons to persevering. There's pros and cons to uh, being persistent. And, you know, there's, we're trying to elevate the pros of um, choosing to be more resilient. And we're going to take a break here in a little bit. But what I'm really hearing you say is that our listening audience can actually ask themselves several questions today. And just by, ans by asking the questions, they're already improving their resilience muscles, right? They can say, how do I want to show up? Yeah. They can ask if they're being, if they're uh, committed to resilience. They, they can ask if there is a different way that they can get to the other end. They can ask if there's an option. They can uh, be creative. Um, I just played a game the other night where in the rules, it literally said, be creative and think outside of the box. Yes. You know, it's a word game. Yes. And so, you know, as soon as you're given permission to literally let go of the the, the box, the, the foundation that we typically live in, it's amazing what the brain can do. And that is a living, breathing example of the brain's ability to be resilient, right? So being able to ask questions, what are my resources, right? The brain is going to come up with an endless supply when you ask, what are my options? What are my resources and what is possible? At that point, then what are you committed to? Are you committed to arguing or discussing things in the old way? Or are you committed to being willing to try something completely new? I'm going to give you the last word before we go to break because I know you got something on the tip I, of your tongue. I, I, just, I just love this. I get excited, right? The funny part is that you're talking about being creative, right? As I continue to, my disability causes me to uh, lose muscle. And so over the course of my lifetime, I've gotten significantly weaker. And at some point I got to the point where I could no longer write with my hands or type with my hands. So I got creative. I got a chopstick. I type with a chopstick. I push buttons with a chopstick. I reach things with a chopstick. I move things around with a chopstick, right? It's my extension. I got creative. I got resilient. And part of that resilience is resourcefulness and creativity. Why? Because I still have a goal. I still have a mission. I still have an intention. I still have a commitment. And because of that, I had to find a way. Why? Because the commitment defines the amount of resilience that will be released in your system and consequently in the way you interact with people and your life. All right, finding a way. It's a great place to take a break. We're with PJ of pjswisdom.com. I'm your host, Diane McClay. Finding a way to be more resilient. We'll be back in a minute. Welcome back, everybody. What a great conversation we're having with PJ of pjswisdom.com. And we're, the topic today is about resilience. And we were just before break talking about, we were really excited about how resilience actually elevates us as human beings. It elevates our energy. It gives us tools to navigate difficult things in our, in our lives, whether it's a conversation or a physical disability, grief, uh, loss, failure, that kind of thing. And so we were talking and getting really excited about uh, being committed and being and being creative and being resourceful in order to get where we want to go. So PJ, just pick it up a little bit. I mean, why is this so ridiculously exciting to you? And 
Uh, why does this light you up so much? And why does the world need it? Listen, it lights me up because I love life. And if you really want to enjoy your life, it's going to require a certain amount of resilience. You're going to have to be um, persistent enough to keep moving forward towards something that you really want, despite the adversity, despite the resistance, despite the difficulty. And there are going to be times when you really want something. And for whatever reason, you feel overwhelmed. You feel um, like there's this resistance pushing against you, something holding you down, holding you back, right? Um, squeezing you in, boxing you in. And you were talking about that in terms of being boxed in. So you might feel that sensation where you're just like, oh, I feel boxed in. I don't feel like I have options. I don't feel like I have choices. So this is the perseverance part of uh, resilience, right? How long can you persevere before you actually quit? How long can you persevere before you give up? And when you quit and you give up, all that is, is your commitment just changed from I want that, right, to that seems impossible to get. So I guess I'm just going to settle for this. There's nothing wrong with changing your focus. There's nothing wrong with saying, you know what, I'm not really interested in that anymore, or the, um, the effort that I'm having to put in to get what I want is not pr pr producing what I want. So A, I can either change my goal and my intention, um, or B, I can say, how do I get creative? How do I get resourceful? How do I find a new way of doing the things that I want to do? So for example, let me give you a quick story. Um, as I was getting weaker this last time, not in 2019 when I lost like 85% of my strength virtually overnight, um, but as I was getting weaker, in fact, let me tell you an over, overnight story. I used to have the ability with my arms to lift my arms as high as my shoulders, slightly higher than my shoulders. And I used to have the mus musculature in my forearms and in my hands to hold a bar of soap, like a, a big dove bar of soap in each hand, right? So I could hold a bar of soap, lift up my arm, wash underneath my arm with one hand, hand the bar of soap to my other hand, lift my arm, and then wash under my armpit. And then one morning I woke up and that was all gone. Lit literally overnight, I lost the use of my shoulders and I lost the use of my hands. Tuesday, I could do it. Wednesday, I couldn't do it. When I woke up, I woke up and I was like, why don't my arms work? Why can't I get my arms to move? Why can't I like help myself sit up as well? And um, so all of a sudden I realized, holy crap, overnight, I lost my, my shoulders and I lost my hands. And so my disorder, it's progressive. So I expect to lose things over the course of my lifetime. But overnight, overnight, like in that minute, I had to become resourceful enough. I had to be creative enough. I had to persevere uh, or persist and persevere. I had to persevere through the loss, but I had to persist towards what I needed to do because I had to go to the bathroom. I still had to get in and out of the shower. I still had to get, to, get dressed. I still had to go to work. I had to figure out what my life was going to look like in that moment. That takes resilience. I could have just dropped down and started to cry and given up. And I did cry over the next three months because I thought, oh my gosh, this is it. Like I was in my mid thirties and I thought, this is it. I'm, I'm going to die. Everything is over. And, and it was, it was sad because I wasn't ready to go, but I persisted through that. I persevered more specifically. I persevered through it. And as I was persevering through it, I started to realize, oh, well, this is just my new normal. So then I picked up a goal and said, well, if this is my new normal, that's where I'm going to head. And so that's when I picked up a new goal and I persisted out of it. So I persevered through most of it. And then when I realized I was going to make it, I started to persist. Some people persist. They see the goal. It's the spearhead. So they push through, right? And I think of the, the persistence as a spear tip. And I think of perseverance as the shaft of the spear, right? Just dealing with the, the, the process of moving through something. And so why do I tell you this? Because it's relevant in the sense that when you are experiencing difficulty, when you are experiencing struggle, when you are experiencing a sense of loss, where is your focus? Is it on the loss? Because if it's on the loss, that's your commitment, that's your focus, that's the energy, that's the intention. And your level of resilience will be way down. But if you're like, this sucks and I hate it. It's not where I want to be. I have to get through this. I have to figure out a way. Like when I would get stuck in the bathtub as I was getting weaker, I would get stuck in the bathtub to try to get out because I can't stand. I would sit on the bottom of the shower and I would shower in, 
sitting down. And then when it was time to get out, I would turn off the shower, but the water would still be running out of the faucet and put my left hand on the side of the tub, my right hand on the side of the tub. So I'm, I'm now sitting sideways in the bathtub. And just like a little kid goes up and down steps where they sort of push down with their arms and lift their butt up or, or push down with their arms and lower their butt down. That's the way I would get in and out of the shower. So as I got weaker, I would try to get out and my butt would hit the side of the tub and I'd fall. And I'd try and get out and my butt would hit the side of the tub and I'd fall over and over and over to the point that sometimes I would fall and I would, I would shift and rotate and I would fall face down in the water that was still coming out of the faucet. Not from the shower head, but from the tub faucet because I had to get up on the side of the tub because I couldn't lift my arms high enough to turn off the water. So I had to get up on the side of the tub to scoot over to turn off the water. And so um, I would stop and I'd say, okay, this is the resilience piece. <sighs> Sometimes I'd get pissed and I'd be like, okay, God, I get it. You want me to focus? Okay, fine, <laughs> right? <laughs> so I would get to that point where I would just have to let go of all of the weakness, all of the fear, all of the worry, because that was keeping me from being resilient. That was causing me to be afraid to actually commit to swing my buns up onto the side of the tub. Because if I couldn't be completely committed, then I couldn't actually accomplish it. What I was committed to in those moments was not hitting my, my bum or my tailbone on the side of the tub and falling. But where was my focus in not doing that? So I was committed, you think, well, but if you're committed to not do that, the actual truth is I was, I was so focused on that, I kept doing it. So I would have to get to the point where I was committed to no matter if it hurt me, no matter if I fell, I was committed to push down hard enough, swing my butt at the right time to swing it, uh, to lift myself up, swing my buns out and land on the top side of the tub. And so you get to look at yourself and go, ask yourself just simply one question. Am I resilient right now? And the answer sometimes is going to be like, no, I feel like I'm quitting. Okay, let me ask a different question. Are you quitting or are you taking a break? Because it's okay to take a break, right? But if you're quitting, you can say, okay, if I'm, for me, when I say, am I being resilient right now? And I say, no, immediately my resilience goes right back up. It's automatic in me now because I've done it for so long where I just go, am I being resilient? No. Okay. Boom. All of a sudden it turns back on. I go longer. I go harder. I go faster. I go stronger. I just go and go and go because immediately my resilience turns back on. Well, I want to tag in on this. You know, I, when I was back in Michigan, I did an aerial, uh, like an aerial obstacle course between trees where it's oh, a combination I of, I know, right? Oh, they're so, so fun. I mean, and I'm a pretty adventuresome person. You know, I fly board, I can be 30 feet in the air above water on top of a fire hose and be totally fine. So I, I had cleared a bunch of obstacles and this is with my, my sister. And we get to the very last obstacle where you're 30 feet up in the tree and there's no sign. There's no direction that says this is like, a lot of the obstacles say pull this rope or step over here to at least give you some information. So I get to the end of the obstacle, I'm 25 or 30 feet up in the tree, and I have to get down. The, the way to end the obstacle course is there's this thing, and I know it's a belay device. I know logically that as soon as I grab onto it, it's going to actually take my weight. It's going to put my weight in the saddle, and it's actually going to lower me slower. Yes but it was four feet away from the platform. Yes. Right? So it's going to take a leap of faith. It's literally going to take a step of faith. And I couldn't, I couldn't do it. Like I was, uh, first of all, I'm like, where's the sign? How do I do this? Right. I was looking for someone else. And there's a reason why I'm highlighting this. I was looking for someone else to tell me how to get off of the obstacle. Yeah. I had no information. Yeah. My sister and I had never done this one before. So she wasn't helpful. She's like, well, I think you just step off. And I'm like, really? That's that seems wrong. That seems really wrong. I who would just step off of a platform 25 feet in the air? <laughs> and I and I'm like, so logically, I know I'm harnessed in. I know as soon as I put my clips into the loops on the obstacle, I know I'm not gonna fall. I've I've been on automatic belay devices before when I've been rock climbing. So I I, I logically I know that there's actually enough resistance that's gonna safely lower me to the ground. But in the moment of stepping off the platform, first of all, there was a lack of trust. There was definitely a lack of faith. Uh, there was a lack of information. There was a lack of creativity. And there was a lack of willingness to just see what happens. 
I was paralyzed on the platform. Like if there weren't three people behind me, I seriously would have reversed to go backwards on the course to get myself off of it. <laughs> so I'm thinking, oh, well, what are my options? Well, if I don't really feel good about stepping off the platform. Hold on, hold on, hold on one second. Yeah, jump in. In that moment, in that moment, what were you committed to? I was committed to my fear. And I was committed to not trusting that. I mean, this is a, it, it's bad bit for business if somebody gets hurt or dies on one of these aerial park things, right? <laughs> Generally speaking, it's really bad for business. So they wouldn't, so I was, I was not committed to the logic and I was committed to something that I didn't know how to control. You're committed I, to your own safety. Yeah. That's it. it comes, it's very simple. You're there was a survive. There was a primal survival thing kicking in my brain, but, but in hindsight, I was committed to the fear. I wasn't committed to trust or belief or creativity. So let me bring this to a close. I thought, well, it'll be better if I sit on the edge of the platform and scooch my butt off and then let the thing catch me. Sure. No, because then what happened is as soon as I went off the platform, like my arms went back, you know, I was off balance, right? So as I'm starting to go down, my arms go back and both my arms kind of hit the platform, like scraped up my arm torqued my shoulder a little bit and I, you know, but as soon as literally I'm in the sit position, it's like, yeah. like, it's like, duh, it was safe. Yeah. And I, as soon as I got to the ground, I told my sister, I'm like, uh, don't try sitting. That didn't work so well. Right. <laughs> but I, in the hindsight, I was committed to someone needed to tell me how to do it, which I think is a really good parallel that we, re- we, rely on other people giving us input on what they think is best for us and the reality is is if i was committed to trusting myself if i was committed to believing in my ability to believing that my safety wouldn't be compromised if i was committed to just trying if i was committed to just stepping off and taking that that literally step of faith everything would have worked out just fine. Now, where does the resilience piece come in in that? What I know <laughs> yeah, now sorry, is- I thought you were asking. Well, well, I am asking. So what? So from your perspective, you're the resiliency expert. Where is the resiliency? Where is it or where is it not in that situation for me? So were you actually done because I jumped in? I got excited. No, jumping. I, I love when you get excited. Okay, okay. Um, forgive me. Um, so first of all, it's really important for, important for us to recognize that um, there are really basically, basically two parts to our brain, our conscious mind and our unconscious mind. And a section of our unconscious mind is dedicated to your safety. Far and away and above virtually everything else, your instincts are going to um, keep you, make every effort to keep you safe, right? So it doesn't need to exhaust the energy um, that it takes to be resilient um, in many cases. Um, it utilizes the resilience for, um, for keeping you alive during difficult situations. So if it doesn't have to, if your brain can keep you from doing dangerous things, it will, then it doesn't have to use that additional energy to keep you resilient. So you are dedicated to your safety and so many people are dedicated to their safety um, that it looks like when, you know, when you slip, whether you're slipping in the tub, you're slipping uh, on ice, you're, you know, you step on uh, strangely in the kitchen and your socks, right? The moment you start to go down, arms go out everywhere, legs everywhere, trying to grab a hold of anything or anybody that you possibly can. A friend of mine was sitting on the bed with her boyfriend at the time, and she went to lean back on the bed and realized she was at the edge of the bed. And when she leaned back, she realized there was no bed there. And as she started to fall off, her instinct was to reach out and grab anything she could. It just so happened that she latched onto my friend Lance's eye socket with her nail, right? Okay. Right no, in that. No more right detail on that. Right no, below the eye. No detail. And no detail. Stop there. Hold herself back up with his eyeball, with his eye socket. Okay. All right. So she, that's, the whole, that's the whole thing. Yeah. That's the whole thing is that in relationships of any kind, and you had a relationship with the equipment, you had a relationship with the owners. You had a relationship with your fear in that moment. 
in that moment, we reach out and grab anything that we possibly can on our way down, right? So that's why in bad relationships, all of a sudden, all this kind of crap starts to come up 13 years ago. I'm just saying stuff that I thought we'd resolved or you thought we'd resolved. And now I'm bringing it up again. Why? Because in these moments, we're not experiencing resilience. We're committed to our fear. We're committed to our safety, right? And we're committed to whatever it takes to make sure that we are okay. But resilience is an evolution. So it's the next level of saying, hold on, I'm becoming evolved. So I'm not just allowing the resilience of my instincts or my instinctual resilience that keeps me alive long enough till I get to the next watering hole or get some food or um, uh, develop a skill to be able to, to accomplish something, right? These are almost often instinctual um, methods of resilience coming out. Skill can sometimes be learned, uh, um, but skill can also be something that you develop over just um, interaction with your environment. And, and I want to so, I want to yeah. jump in there Please. real quick, yeah. if I can. 100%. 100%. Because I just want to say that like, each time I go through that course, yeah. I become more resilient to the thing that I don't know how to do, right? And that I, that I think is a transferable metaphor. Each time you go through something, whatever it is, and you actually get through it, you wake up the next day and go, okay, I'm not dead yet. Yeah. And like, if in that moment you can pause and say, what did I learn? Yes. How can I apply it to the next situation? Yeah. And what, you know, and the, how, what did I learn is what won't I do? Yeah. I'm not ever going to be on a platform and sit down again, unless there's a sign that says sit down to do this. Right. Oh, that's correct. But I think the metaf I think the transferable piece of information is each time we do something and we get through it, whether it's good, whether it's bad, whatever the whatever the adjective is, um, we now have more information. We our awareness has automatically gone up. Yeah. Right. I had no idea I would be scared of stepping off a platform when a lot of my sports mm -hmm. are high up in the air to begin with. Yes. Right. But now I know that that's there. And, and now what am I committed to? I'm committed to being resilient. I don't want to feel that sense of paralyzation anymore. I don't want to feel that level of fear and inadequacy. I don't want to feel uh, like, you know, somebody's going to have to come down and clip a rope to me and get me <laughs> off of this thing because I want to be able to do it myself. Yes, and I think you I can relate to that. Um, but now my, now what I know is resilience comes into play it, it's actually subconsciously coming into play as I was going through the action of getting down off of the obstacle. Mm. But then I think there's a big um, helping of resilience that shows up as soon as my, my dinosaur brain knows that I'm safe. I think there's a huge helping of resilience that I now get to help myself to. Mm. And I get to say, I'd like a little bit more of that, please. I'd like a little bit of more of that, please. Put some more of that on my plate. And then it's about how do I apply that? How do I take action in my life with the knowledge that I have? That's where I would say resilience comes in. And I love how you said it's dynamic and it's a, it's evolutionary. And it also is a way to refill the finite place of, evolu of um, resistance, resilience. Yeah, a, a couple of responses to that. Um, first, let's um, briefly um, reference your story that you told me when you got back about you and your dad uh, trimming a tree right? Yeah. And you being up in the tree and uh, why don't I'm going to let you tell the, the story briefly. And then I'm going to make the point about where resilience, how I see resilience in a metaphor here. Yeah. Short version is there's a freestanding 30 foot piece of a white pine that uh, again, broke off. Again, you being adventurous up off the ground. Yeah. I mean, 30 feet in the air. I I'm, it was creative because I didn't have a harness. So I used a piece of rope to create a saddle harness. But the tree was so precarious and it was so heavy on the top that every time we made a cut, we, we decided to buck the tree from the top down. Uh, and it wasn't a tree where roots were in the ground. It was like a, the a split top that had fallen off and then driven itself in the ground. So it wasn't even really anchored in like a normal tree would be. But extension ladder, climbed up even higher, making cuts. And it took us four hours, but in hindsight, every time I made a cut with a chainsaw, the, the pieces fell where I wanted them to fall and exactly how I wanted them to fall with the exception of one little three inch uh, uh, stub that we had roped off 
And when I cut it, it swung on the rope and pivoted and kind of tagged me in the chest a little bit. But the short story is, is that, you know, in four hours, we bucked a tree that seemed impossible to buck. And it was filled with challenges and complications, but communication and proper planning allowed me to do it. And, and the resilience you hit on uh, on in twofold, um, the uh, the communication that you had, you and your dad had the same idea, right? You wanted to bring the tree down top to bottom, and in the process, you talked about all the steps and the ways you're going to do it. Collaborated, you had the same goal in mind, right? So you collaborated in the effort, and you're you were persistent all the way through, right? Um, and maybe there wasn't much perseverance other than maybe the uh, holding up the chainsaw and the musculature that that took and, um, you know, and making sure that the, the rope ladder was, or the rope uh, saddle was holding you in the right way. So the resilience came in a couple of different ways. One, you had a targeted goal and you persisted through it together through collaboration and conversation that um, saw each other as equal with each ideas because you both wanted to bring the tree down as simply and quickly and easily as possible and you did that with one minor mistake where a three inch you know piece swung a little further than both of you thought and bumped you in the chest the other piece of resilience is the fact that you utilized a rope um, as a saddle um, a climbing saddle for you to go up and just the simple fact that it held you in place was acting as a resilient um, tool for you or a tool of resilience because it held you in place. Um, and that means that in that moment, you were resilient because you're able to hold to a particular state. I often say state of mind, but you're able to hold in a physical state that you wanted to be in. So remember the second piece is going back to my definition, which is maintaining the energy and focus to maintain the state of mind or the physical state in this case um, and or achieve the targeted goal. And so I think that this is where the resilience comes in. Um, it's when you focus on what it is that you want or and what you want might be that goal out there or what you might, uh, what you want might be, I in this moment, I just don't wanna quit. I wanna keep moving forward. I don't know where this is gonna get us, but this is where I wanna go with it, you know? Okay. I'm glad you brought in that it's a state of mind and we we have about three minutes left to the end yeah. of our show, but I would love to actually have another conversation with you and re-engage this because I think there's another layer we haven't really tapped into. Uh, mm -hmm. So so really briefly just tag it is about how resilience is, is it's the emotional and mental piece more than the physical piece. Uh, speak to physical, that really Yeah, your physical body, my little tiny four foot tall in my wheelchair, five one if I'm lucky, if I could stand up, you know, 85, 90 pound body um, is going to do what my brain tells it to do as long as there's musculature there. Even if the muscles are tired, it's going to do what I tell it to do as long as I've got some muscle. If not, I'm going to be resourceful and creative to find a way. The body is resilient by definition. The mind is what makes you push forward or makes you quit. So your body cuts, bruises, scrapes, broken bones. Look at the guy who um, got his arm stuck on the boulder, he was resilient enough to cut his own arm off and then resilient enough to walk out of the park to find some safety. And he stayed there, if I remember correctly, for three days with his arm crushed before he decided to cut his arm off so that he could survive. That's massive resilience. Why? Because inside of him, he wanted to survive. And so his goal was survival and that required perseverance and persistence. Absolutely. And, you know, I think that um, I would love to have you come back. And I would love to, to dig more into uh, how do we, how do, you know, when, because the mind is the hardest thing, right? You can't just go, oh, let go of it and everything's easy. So I would love to have you come back and dig into the conversation of um, developing and enhancing and strategically uh, teaching the mind how to be more resilient so that we're emotionally resilient. Uh, in the meantime, I, I know that you're starting to do speaking gigs. I know you're getting on stages. I know you're working with different corporations. So how can people find you mm -hmm. and how can they, uh, how can they book you if they want? Great. Well, thank you for asking. Um, just go to pjswisdom.com. 
start there. It's easiest just to go there. PJSWisdom.com. And, right. um, you know, I, you're right. I have been a speaker since I was seven years old. Um, I do corporate training around resilience. I'm an executive coach. Um, I also do consulting for companies. So, you know, if I can help your team, um, sales team, leadership team, general audience, um, understand resilience and how it applies to your life and your relationships and your goals, let me help. I'd be more than happy. And um, it would be a real honor to be able to do that. Well, it's been an honor. I know you've helped me. You've taught me a lot of things about resiliency with interpersonal relationships, yeah. and you've taught me a lot about uh, coaching. So thank you for that. As always, I love our conversations. Thank you for saying yes. Thank you for being here. And thank you for making the world a better place by putting your thoughts and your ideas out there. Uh, come you. back again. Thank you. Thanks. Can I say one last thing? Of course. Resilience is a choice because you're only as resilient as you think. Nice. And with that, we're going to close. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in to another show of the Diane McClay Show on Friday on Transformation Talk Radio. We'll see you in two weeks. Thank you for listening to the Diane McClay Show, where you are empowered to enact change in your life through choice. You know that little voice in your head that's been telling you to pursue that passion project? Or maybe it's been screaming for you to go outside and explore the great outdoors. That voice is you, and you deserve to be heard. Listen, make a choice, make a change, and watch yourself grow. For more information about Diane or to work with her personally, visit dianemcclay.com.